Want to gain early access for new snob episodes, take part in polls or AMAs? Then help support us over at Patreon by clicking the links below in the comments or in the description, or go directly to patreon.com slash the cinema snob. Thanks for watching. Oh, now I'm very glad I put that uh, Patreon bumper on there last week. It has been an interesting day, people. I no, no, no. My uh, my son is has, hasn't been born yet. Uh, no, no. I I'm still in the uh, uh, phase in my life where I have gathered you all here to uh, to talk about copyright issues. It's a very spontaneous stream. I know the name of the stream says uh, surprise stream not really a surprise i scheduled the stream i promoted it over on twitter put it in the uh uh community section as well so more so spontaneous in that i was planning on doing some streaming tomorrow which i am still planning on doing uh doing another show uh tomorrow as well but some of you might have already seen the uh, 63 minute episode that I did of uh, the 1997 miniseries uh, of of The Shining. It was up for not 12 hours, I think, 12, uh, 14, 15 hours, so almost as long as the actual miniseries, give or take several hours, but. <laughs> Almost as long as that. So um, you always kind of have that in your head where <laughs> the the longer the episode is, like the, the more days it takes you to make, the more days it takes in terms of watching it, editing it. Um, it, it was over a week to do that one. Uh, you kind of wonder, you're like, it... it it goes without saying, like, there will probably be some kind of copyright issue with it that you'll have to fight. Like, if it was an easy episode to make, <laughs> like one of the porn parodies or something, oh no, I could get that watched, written, shot, and edited all in a day, <laughs> which I which I have done before, by the way. Um, but, uh, so, we certainly do like to um, to have... A pretty big buffer between when an episode is uh, unlisted over on YouTube and when it goes public. You know, because if you're on our Patreon or you follow us on social media or you see us advertising our Patreon, you know, like episodes go up there like a, a week in advance. And within that week, you know, we certainly keep an eye out for any copyright issues that are going on. Usually if there is a copyright issue, it gets picked up pretty quick as soon more often than not as soon as it gets uploaded sometimes it is the next day or sometimes if a company has changed uh the uh, the amount of time of a clip that content id is picking up then like an older video will get picked up so it, <laughs> it really like the fact that this one got hit for copyright like it, it kind of goes on with, goes along with my past couple of weeks where i have been taking care of a lot of old copyright issues uh, on the channel i'll get to that in a minute but when when i finished editing uh when i finished editing the shining mini series it was the sunday before i posted it and then on the monday i that morning, I rendered it, uploaded it. So it sat there unlisted for um, quite a few hours, like uh, long enough to where I was like, okay, well, it hasn't been hit. It hasn't been hit. Everything's going through fine. Okay, okay, that's cool. That's shorter than I typically, or that's shorter than typically anybody likes. But I will say, say this, when... You know, as you guys have noticed, the video got flagged. It's currently going through appeals right now, but it is over on Patreon. It's still there. You can you can see uh you can see the video over on patreon.com slash the cinema snob. Or if you happen to catch it last night too. So when it got hit earlier, it got hit in a way that it did it didn't really matter if it had been unlisted for a really long time because 
I was posting because it's a three part mini series, the Sh- the Shining nineteen ninety seven series. So when I finished editing like the first part of it, I put the first part of it on Patreon, like kind of like I do with the year in film episodes, where they're up on Patreon in in pieces. Then when it's public, it all comes together. So because those old parts of the Shining uh, or the those parts of the Shining parts one and two, those unlisted ones didn't get flagged when the, when the full version of it got flagged earlier see i got my siamese cup like because of the cats cam i, I still got to give a shout out to the cats because the cats have a uh, quite a few cameos in that episode it got flagged from a manual review uh from somebody who manually looked at it and flagged uh a couple of different parts of it now, sometimes when something gets, I've mentioned this before, sometimes when something gets flagged, you can still, like, it could still be monetized, uh, and when that happens, you don't really have to privatize it or anything like that. Typically, it it, it gets taken care of, uh, but this is one of those cases where sometimes it just depends on who is sending out a notice in a case like this, where it was, I, I believe it being manual had something to do with this, to where even when it's going through an appeal, it's still blocked in like a lot of countries, uh, maybe even here too. But there's a lot of places where it's blocked, even though it's going through an appeal. And because of that, th- there isn't even kind of this holding, this like holding bin monetization that's going on. So that's, you know. It's just got to be private while it's going through that. And because it's manual, I'm like, I'm sitting there going, uh, is this going to, am I going to have to go through a second appeal on it? Because sometimes it'll take two, sometimes it'll get cleared from the first one. And then you have to go into a second appeal. And given that this was manual, I don't know, but it was it wasn't some third party thing or anything like that that did it. It was Warner Brothers. And um I've had stuff flagged by them before and it's usually been t- taken care of. In fact, just last weekend, one of the ones an older video that had like a, a Warner Brothers hit on it was um for Exorcist 2 the Heretic. And that got cl- I sent in a, a dispute on that. That got cleared over the weekend, so if you want to see that. So because now suddenly this shining episode is gone, temporarily i was like okay well i'll do a stream uh i'll do a i'll I'll do an extra stream this week and there is one that i put back up i i was waiting on it um i i was waiting on it because uh i I want a new title this is one of the title cards i had to do myself uh like sean um went to go visit some family not too long ago so there was a few episodes where like you can always tell when it's me doing the title card and this was one of them uh where is it there you go the ronald reagan is indiana jones movie i made that one public again earlier and that was one where i had to privatize it for a really 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 long time and so i you know did the appeal on that it the appeal got accepted not too long ago but i was holding off on it till at least like i could have like another title card but this time i'm like well I guess I'll go ahead and throw it up now, post a couple of links to it. It's definitely one of those episodes where it's like, well, that's an episode just for me. Like, sure, the one that took me a lot of time, the Shining miniseries, it's over an hour long. That one you gotta wait on. But you got Ronald Reagan is Indiana Jones from a 1950s movie. <laughs> He punches some communists in it. He's like Indiana Jones, but if he chain smokes a lot and, like, steals significantly more shit. (laughs) So, here, uh, within the past few weeks, I have been going through and looking at all the different copyright claims that have been going on. And uh, snipping some of them, doing appeals on some of them. There was quite a few in there. It was... uh, I think it was like well over 80 videos like had claims on them and now I've gotten it down I've gotten it down to where it's it's in the 20s I think and so here's another some of you might have noticed this happened earlier today this is kind of funny 
But here's what happened earlier today. Okay, so I have noticed that some of the videos that had claims on them, in the past, I must have set them as unlisted. Uh, Maybe it was a case like with this Shining one where I had to privatize it or something like that, and I just kind of forgot I privatized it, and then went through and saw, like, oh, okay, I actually have to uh, make public the... um, episode I did on the first Nightmare on Elm Street. Uh, I think there was another one that was like that. I think one of the Heaven's Gate episodes was like that too, uh, where I had to then still like make it public. So I went uh, <laughs> I went and looked at the list of all my videos, and then I narrowed it down to, okay, which ones are unlisted? And, you know, it was a lot of like uh, 1983 in film, part one, part two, part three, The Shining, part one, part two. You know, I had to sift through all of those. <laughs> But um, there was a couple in there that I did notice where I'm like, oh, okay, that one's clear now. I got to make that public. One of the ones I saw, some of you might have noticed this or this morning on the site. One of the videos I saw on there that was marked as unlisted said um, the worst films of 2021. And I know that I had had to do like copyright stuff on the on those before. Like I remember I had to like do like a like two appeals on the worst films of 2022 one uh for uh i, I forget which movie it was there, there, there was one of the movies on there where it kept getting flagged so i thought that was the case of 2021 i was i was sitting there going oh i must have had to privatize this or keep it unlisted for some reason while it was going through a copyright and just kind of forgot like uh so i i wasn't sure why it was unlisted but I also wasn't sure why I uploaded it twice, because apparently that's what happened. I was like, oh, well, I need to make that public, so I made it public. And then I noticed, like, alerts were going out to people that this new video was on there, and I started getting com- a lot of comments on there. At first, I was thinking, like... Did they set it to where, which actually this would be a really helpful thing, if they set it to where if you have to, if something was public once... And then you have to privatize it or make it unlisted. But then if you make it public again, I don't think people get alerts if it gets made public a second time. Maybe that's changed. Maybe they do. But I remember that not being the case. And I've noticed that not being the case, too, still with some stuff that I've changed from being unlisted. So... I thought that was weird where suddenly I was like, it looks like a lot of people are getting alerts for this worst of 2021 video. Also, why is it listed as a new video on my channel? Luckily, there was a commenter in there that said, I don't know why this is on here twice. Uh, The old video is still on here. So for some reason, I must have uploaded that video twice. Maybe it was because... I'm trying to think of why I would have done that. Maybe it was because... uh, Maybe there were two separate. Maybe there was a. There was a. Maybe there was a claim on that video, and so I wanted to upload it again to see if maybe it would get cleared sooner. If I if I opted into like a, a quicker appeal or something like that, I don't know. I <laughs> I'll have to go back to January of 2022, which really isn't that long ago. But my silly memory like i don't know why i uploaded it twice so for an hour 2021 i went ahead and privatized it again um i went ahead and privatized it again but the original video which has been up for well over a year is still there so if you still want to if you still want to see me and doug talk about it it's it's still there, just not that second one that I put up earlier. So there was some interesting action going on. Uh, there was some interesting action going on on the site earlier. It's actually been as frustrating as this is, and it is frustrating, because kind of like what I was just saying a little bit ago, this similar thing happened with um, not the 1994, the stand, but the... Uh, the the series that they did a, a couple of years ago the one with um James Marsden that one same thing happened to hit that that it, what is happening with the stand right now where or I'm I'm sorry with the shining right now where um 
it was up for like a day, then it got flagged, and it got flagged in a way that I had to privatize it. The frustrating thing about that is that when it does get cleared and you do make it public again, you do have to work your ass off at really, really, really advertising it. Because again, unless I'm wrong, unless this has changed, it's not like it'll get, it's not like people will get alerts when when it's cleared and then it's public again. So you kind of have to like, there, yeah, you, you advertise it on Twitter, the community section. You can make that your featured video, which I think is what I'm doing with the Ronald Reagan one right now. <laughs> I think the Ronald Reagan Indiana Jones movie is the featured video on the channel right now. So sure, there's there's that. You can re-advertise it like that, but not everyone checks those things. But luckily with the stand, like, yeah, I had to work pretty hard at re-advertising it, but it was a long video. So over time, with it being a long video, it certainly accumulated a really good amount of views. It just took it a while. It took it a while because it was privatized. At least here with The Shining, like, yeah, I'll have to work my ass off at advertising it again. But at least now, like, I, I'm making a stream about it right now. <laughs> And when it's public again, I'll make another stream about it too. It will be the featured video for a while. <laughs> Damn it, I want to get to the Langoliers too. No, no, it'll be a while before I get to that. I'm working on um I'm working on Saw Two this week. Tomorrow I gotta watch Saw Two. Uh so but again, I like I said, it's in terms of fighting different copyright things, it actually kinda goes along with what I've been doing for a couple of weeks. Just this one's a little more frustrating because it's a newer video. And I was in such a good mood, too, because I was get, between today and yesterday, I was getting quite a few alerts uh, about different claims that have been released. So uh, I was like, oh, uh, God's Club uh, claim released, uh, Christian Mingle claim released, uh, Night of the Seagulls claim released. I'm like, cool, cool, cool. Get another alert. The Shining flagged. Oh. Mm, fourth email alert, not a charm. I'm <laughs> that is I I I apparently made a deal with someone very very shady. Oh, we'll release Christian Mingle and God's Club, but we got we'll keep the hedge monsters safe from the public. Mm -mm. <laughs> I thought that the hardest ones in terms of like old videos that I was submitting appeals for. I thought that the hardest one was probably going to be the three-part uh, Heaven's Gate episode that I did. Um, because that that was an episode that was edited in, in the blip days. And clips were just edited differently back then. Uh, some of them were, like, kind of longer. So I thought, I was like, ooh, I might be having to trim some stuff here. And then when I looked at what the claim was, it was one of the easiest. All it was, and I totally get this. Like, I, I absolutely do. Um... All it was was the, uh, each of those, since this was edited in the blip days, like, sometimes episodes would have, like, ending credit, ending credits and ending credit music. And usually the music would be something from the movie. So, with Heaven's Gate, th there was ending credits on each of those episodes, and I was using music from the Heaven's Gate soundtrack. Uh, that's what got flagged, was, like, the music and the ending credits. I'm like, oh, 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 okay quick fix all the way. snip 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 cool the heaven's gate episodes are back those are the easiest the ones i'm the one i'm fighting with the most right now is uh uh friday the 13th 3d i wasn't sure if this was going to be easy or not because this is from like a paramount third party thing or something like that where they put claims on um I have a compilation of all the Friday the 13th movies that I haven't made public yet. I've been putting together like different compilations for when, you know, after, you know, after after the baby's born and and you know, we take some time off. So I've been putting together some compilations for that. So they hit that. There was an old claim that they had on Mommy Dearest. Uh there was a couple of other things too. And after appealing those twice, it went to the third, which is basically when it says you have seven days to cancel the appeal or a strike will be put on your account. 
Now, a lot of times, like, you can f- still fight that, which I had to do with... I had to fight that with Christmas Evil and uh, something else, too. Uh, I think one of the... Maybe one of the Easter ones, I can't remember, but definitely Christmas Evil I did. In, in a case like this, where I'm like, oh, I got multiple appeals out there, uh, I better cancel this and just kind of do all the snipping that I that I can and hope that that takes care of it. So when I canceled those appeal, those appeals, the the company went ahead and canceled theirs too. So like the Friday the Thirteenth compilation, Mommy Dearest, and I think there was something else too. Just they got clear, they were fine. So I was kind of hoping the case that would also be the case with Friday the Thirteenth 3D. So far, it hasn't been, <laughs> and I'm so it's kind of turning into a game. The Shining thing is frustrating with the Friday the Thirteenth 3D one. It's kind of turning into a game where I'm like, it's <laughs> we're sitting like, if I clip this here, clip this here, put these together. Oh, let me see if that'll do it. Oh, that didn't do it. All right, all right. Let me go ahead and try again. <laughs> it's it's sort of turned into that like. Uh, <laughs> it's probably what I'll be doing when I get done here too. <laughs> but uh, anyway, I when when I stream again in the week, uh I'll also mention some uh I'll I'll mention more videos that have gotten that have gotten cleared. We've been putting it over in the community section. Uh we put a couple in there last week. We've enough have been cleared to where we can put some in the community section for for quite a while. <laughs> uh but last week I mentioned uh, Hercules got cleared. The Illusionauts. It's weird some of them that, like, have claims on them. The Illusionauts did. Uh, the, the Illusionauts cleared. And uh, a couple of the Nightmare on Elm Street ones did. I think most of the Nightmare on Elm Street ones should be good right now. So, okay. But I the, well, the bright thing that did happen today... The bright thing that did happen today... I went on a... You guys are going to love this. I know I've been playing a lot of show and tell in here. I am still surrounded by all these old Fisher Price houses, but I've now found the coolest thing that is going to be in our house. One of the coolest things. One of the one of the coolest like items that one of the coolest items, I should say. Um even though yes, I am surrounded by 80s Sesame Street House, 70s Sesame Street House random serial killer Fisher Price house that we talked about last week. You'll have to watch that episode to see that Le- lemon lemon colored two story house. Anyway, went on my walk earlier and walked by some different shops that we have in town. We've got a, a an antiques shop that uh, is pretty close to us. They're having a really big sale. Walked by it and there was uh, <laughs> The place is really cool. It's it's really cool to walk through. Like uh, whether you want uh, whether you want some uh, oh some turn of the century salt and pepper shakers or this old TV guide from 1972 or these 60s football cards. Oh maybe maybe I should get those. Not into sports. I should check to see if they're worth something. No no. But I found something absolutely priceless, except for the price that I paid for it, that was worth every single penny. So I saw these po- these like paintings that were sitting just like leaned up against the door and there was a face with these like, you know, signature eyebrows that I see, see sitting there. I'm like, that is going home with me. I'll take it, sir. The guy goes, oh, we only accept cash. Let me go across the street. I guarantee you I'll be right back. Two minutes later, I come back give him the cash excellent can't wait to go home and show this to laura oh uh, i love random things to hang up around the house and now i got myself this amazing beautiful gorgeous artwork of mr academy award nominee gary sinise sure sure the Shining miniseries episode I did may be flagged right now, but that's okay because I got Stu Redman from the stand right here with it with that badass face doing the <laughs> with uh, I think that's one of my old jackets. I got some more hair on my chest, but that might be one of my that might be one of my old jackets. We got similar eyebrows. Here we do. He he's got more hair than I do. So, I got Stu Redman right here, so I can just 
have his if something gets stressful with a king mini series and copyright limbo i can have the wise words of Stu redman in my head that is just like now let's get on out of here and grab ourselves a beer right i agree Stu redman although let me wait for my wife to fall asleep first <laughs> then we can go out and grab a beer grab Grab some other cast members from the stand. Get Rob Lowe in here and uh, Dauber from Coach. I love this. This is my new favorite thing. This is my new favorite thing. And my new favorite thing that's going to be hanging on the wall. And that's saying something because I've got a framed Windy City poster sitting right there. And for good luck, I always have my Screwballs poster looking at me too over there as well. I love this. We already got a spot for it. It's by our door. It's the first thing that we see when we walk in. <laughs> it's the first thing that we see whenever we walk in, looking like he's greeting us and pointing down where we should put our shoes. This is awesome. It uh it originally I thought the style of artwork looked familiar. It came from a Geno's East in Chicago where they have like, you know, different people from around the area like artwork like this hung up all over the walls. And there were there were other ones there too when I was at the antique store, but Stu Redman is the one that I was interested in the most. Yes. Find of the year. I'll, I'll put you back on the wall when I get done here. <laughs> Anyway, that put me in a really good mood. <laughs> I hope I hope it puts you in a good mood too. When yeah, you hang that on the wall when you come home every day is Jimmy Shaker Day. <clears throat> okay, that might be all. <laughs> oh no, you know what? We will do something else. We'll do something else. Um. I did uh, kind of say that I that that I would do this. Might not take that long to get through. Sure, the Shining mini series episode. It may be, it may be uh, privatized, and it may be in there for a little while. But would you uh, would you guys watching? Would you guys are watching? Would you like me to? Uh, would you like me to read the script that I asked Chat GPT? Ask ChatGPT to write for uh, the Cinema Snob Shining 1997 miniseries episode. Yeah, I did. I went to ChatGT. Uh, excuse me, ChatGPT. It's so easy to use. The hardest part is saying the letters without stumbling and stuttering. I asked, "Will you write a script for a snob episode on 1997's The Shining?" It'd be great if they were so good that it really was just a transcript of the actual episode. Like, wow, you work fast. All right, let's go ahead and read this. Let's go ahead and read what uh, Chat GPT with the catchphrases that they give me. I am, like I said, I am convinced they are writing these in this. Like, AI is their source of the Cinema Snob is just like the first two years of it. Even though I didn't really have catchphrases back then, other than thank you very much, other than that, which they've never actually used in one of these chat GPT scripts that I've asked them to do for the cinema snob, they just make up different ones. They had one, they had one where it started out me saying like, uh, welcome to the cinema snob. It said like, said the cinema snob as he puts on his trademark fedora. It has me wearing turtlenecks, fedoras, a tie, I think, at one point. It doesn't even get the no shoes part right. Okay. Let's go ahead and uh, let's read. Mm -mm. Let's do a reading right here of the chat GPT version of the Cinema Snobs, The Shining 1997 miniseries. Took me like nine days to do the sh miniseries episode. Would have been, could have been way easier if I just had AI do it. All right. So, the Cinema Snob reviews the Shining 1997 miniseries. Mm -mm, opening scene. The Cinema Snob sits in his dimly lit theater room. It's a TV room in a basement. An eerie... Mm -mm, an eerie glow casting... 
There's an eerie glow casting shadows on his face. Ooh, I, I have a lighting budget in this episode. He holds up a DVD case with the title The Shining 1997 written on it. I never owned that on DVD. The cinema... Okay, now we're getting into the dialogue. The cinema snob with his mischievous grin. <laughs> mm-hmm. Greetings, my snobsters of the night. My snobsters of the night. Not just snobsters this time, snobsters of the night. Today we're stepping into the twisted world of Stephen King's The Shining, the 1997 miniseries adaptation. So grab your axe, grab your axe and your psychic abilities, because we're about to check into the Overlook Hotel. See, already the chat GPT version needs to be actually... He... The line that the snob should be saying is, so grab your mallet and your and your psychic abilities. That's still fine. The cinema snob provides an introduction for the 1997 miniseries and its connection to the Stephen King novel. <laughs> Highlighting... <laughs> this is based on a novel by Stephen King. Highlighting the differences from Stanley Kubrick's iconic 1980 film adaptation. Cinema snob raising an eyebrow. Hmm. Ah, The Shining, a story that has been adapted more times than King himself has written novels. Twice? Unless you're counting the Turkish version. Oh, these jokes are very flawed that ChatGPT is doing. Mm -mm. But how does this made-for-TV version stack up against Kubrick's cinematic masterpiece? Let's find out. Scene 2, the cast and characters. The Cinema Snob discusses the cast of the 1997 miniseries, and Steven Weber as Jack Torrance and Rebecca De Mornay as Wendy Torrance. Cinema Snob, Cinema Snob nodding. We've got Weber, who's a far cry from Jack Nicholson, and De Mornay, who's got some big shoes to fill as Wendy. Let's see if they can bring their own flavor to these iconic roles. Weber is great. I, I got problems with that miniseries. Weber is great. I don't know what this fake me is implying right here. Steven Weber gives, like, the perform. I love Steven Weber anyway. I loved Wings. I watched Wings when that was on. He was great on Studio 60. Steven Weber is awesome. Underrated, cool dude all around. The Shining miniseries has a lot of problems. Steven Weber is not one of them. He gives arguably maybe his best performance in it. He's that good. He's He is great in it. Like, uh, anyway, you'll see, you'll see it in the actual, re <laughs> it's like I'm arguing with robot version of myself here. <sighs> scene three, scene three, story and adaptation. The cinema snob, the cinema snob delves into the miniseries approach to adapting King's novel, emphasizing the differences from Kubrick's version. Cinema snob smirking, just coming up with different ways for me to smile, different words for me to smile. King... King's Shining is a different beast compared to Kubrick's. <laughs> this one sticks closer to the source material. This one sticks closer to the source material, supernatural hedge animals and all. But does it make it scarier? We'll see. It's a cinema snob. Chat GPT cinema snob is very teasy. Like he's... Like, <laughs> like he's doing a tease before a commercial break or something. Cinema Snob examines the portrayal of the Haunted Overlook Hotel in the miniseries and its special effects. Cinema Snob with a raised eyebrow. Am I not smirking this time? <laughs> it's, all, it's all about the creepy haunted hotel, isn't it? Let's see if Overlook's ghostly inhabitants deliver the spine-tingling scares we've come to expect. Is he actually going to say anything in this script? This is all just sitting there going... <laughs> It's like he's, again, it's like he's, like, teasing before a commercial break or something like that. Or, like, teasing a next episode, going like, well, you know, the the Kubrick one had a hedge maze in it. This one's got hedge animals. Was it right of Kubrick to make that change from the book? Well, let's find out. And then say nothing. <laughs> The cinema snob discusses the miniseries atmosphere from the eerie music to the cinematography. Cinema snob appreciatively, that's his word of the day, I guess. 
Atmosphere is key in a story like this. Can the miniseries capture the same chilling experiment? The same chilling atmosphere as Kubrick's film, or will it make us just want to redecorate the place? You're not saying anything about it. You're just asking questions. You're just, you're just simply going. We're talking about Stephen King's The Shining. Some say it's good. Some say it's bad. What will I say about it? Find out tonight at eleven. Once we're done fighting the frizzies. Mm-mm. Scene six: The verdict. He hasn't said anything about it. The verdict. Well, it turns out there's good parts and not so good parts. What were those good parts? I'll tell you later. <laughs> After a thorough analysis, the cinema snob delivers his a thorough analysis. <laughs> Thumbs down. <laughs> oh wait, hang on. This is this is kind of reminiscent of early days of YouTube. Okay, one star. <laughs> After a thorough analysis, the cinema snob delivers his verdict on The Shining. The cinema snob nodding. Don't nod to make yourself look smart. Cinema snob nodding. The Shining miniseries stays faithful to King's version, but it lacks the intense psychological dread of Kubrick's adaptation. If you're a fan of the book, or just looking for a different take on the story, give it a shot. But if you want to feel the cold grip of terror, well, you know where to find Jack Nicholson. That paragraph's not that bad. That, that's what that that's I, I kind of say similar things in the actual in the actual review. <laughs> at least at least this it, it that didn't end with a question. If you want to if you want the feel of the cold grip of terror, well, find out later what you should watch instead. <laughs> the cinema snob wraps up the episode. I thought I just did that bidding farewell to his viewers with a classic horror movie recommendation. It's old Cinema Snob. I don't recommend shit. <laughs> cinema Snob grinning. And that's it for today's review, my fellow snobsters. <laughs> I'll never get used to that. That's great. That's it for today's review, fellow snobsters. Remember, if you're ever staying at a haunted hotel, always check for ghostly twins in the hallway. Until next time, keep watching those creepy classics and avoid elevators. That yeah, I I, I probably would say something like that. <laughs> What's an old episode I reviewed that had a killer elevator and a bloody birthday? I think <laughs> that had a killer elevator in it. Probably could have seen myself writing something like that. <laughs> If you go out and have yourself a bloody birthday, well, just check first to see if Chuck E. Cheese is booked up. And, as always, avoid elevators. And also that machine over there, it's rigged. It, it doesn't give out that many tickets. Well, that was fun. I actually really like doing those. <laughs> I have a couple of other ones that I asked it to do. I'm not going to do it this time, but... I've got a couple other ones that I asked it to do, too. I know someone in the chat just goes, short review. I'm like, yeah, I know, right? That's that's why I think that... That's why, that's why I think that, like, it's using old Cinema Snob episodes as a source. Even though the only difference is when we did this before in the other Snob, snob Chat GPT episode... It had me recommending the movie I was talking about, which I wouldn't have <laughs> I wouldn't have done back then, even if it was something I liked. Like, it would have been like a very tongue-in-cheek video, but he wouldn't have recommended it. Even though you can usually tell when it's something that I'd like. Because of the grin. Mm, and the nodding. <clears throat> Alright. Let's go ahead and... Uh, let's do some super chats here, people. This has been fun. This has been fun. I did. <laughs> Any, t like, yeah, 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 it's a pain in the ass with the copyright shit. Dude, we had some fun things to talk about this time, and I got to show this sweet Gary Sinise artwork and read Chat GPT snob episodes, which is like my favorite thing to do now. <laughs> so, okay, let's get uh, let's go ahead and get to your super chat questions. Then we'll get out of here for the night. But I'll be back a couple of more times this week to make up for there being no snob episode this week. Okay. This is from uh, Popper 03244. Didn't say anything, but uh, contributed a dollar to the Super Chat. Thank you very much. It's even got the little balloons on there, which means you're either a ghost in the Overlook 
or it's your first time leaving a super chat, which actually is what it means. So very cool. Thank you very much. Dr. Dr. Gry, Dr. Gold Dry Bowser. Hey, Brad, last weekend was my birthday. Well, that's good to hear. I hope that you got a spot at Chuck E. Cheese and <laughs> that you didn't go in any elevators. But seriously, though, happy birthday. Hope you had a great time. Jacob Matthew Crawford says, when the time comes to teach your son how to read, <laughs> he doesn't want to read it. He, he can, I got some books over there. Hey, he can read the he can read the shining, that's fine. When it comes time to teach your son how to read, we use any educational show. My recommendation is the early two thousands PBS show Between the Lions. I don't know that one. Maybe Laura does. Uh Laura, she she used to take care of kids quite a bit, so she she knows a lot more about the different kids shows that are out past my time watching kids shows. But we both grew up on Sesame Street, so Sesame Street, like, absolutely hardcore will be on the television. And Looney Tunes as well. <laughs> but, yeah, you know, absolutely Sesame Street. That way, he'll know, just to call back to the last couple of episodes, that way he'll know that if he goes to visit the museum, don't eat the pictures. My buddy Mike, my buddy Mike Phelan says, Aw oh man, I was hoping it would be Telly Savala's erotic artwork. I can keep an eye out for that. That that antique store, there probably is something Telly Savalas in there. <laughs> it wouldn't surprise me. Like, uh I've got I've got a uh I do have in my office at the studio, I've got uh I do have a Telly Savalas Blofeld figure over there need to bring it back here proudly display it back there along with maybe maybe i will find a spot for this gary sinise artwork back there as funny as it is over at the door or i could i could just bring it in here when i stream i'm about to stream honey you can tell because i'm moving the telly i'm moving the gary sinise artwork danny mcgraw hey brad what's your favorite stephen king novel i did love carrie um Carrie is the one that I've read the most of Stephen King's book. It's it's a, it's a pretty quick read. It really is. Uh, and I love the whole third act of it, too, when it gets into the actual destruction of the town. I like how it's paced as well. Uh, I did really, really like Christine. Christine's got a special place in my heart for King books because it was the first King book that I read. So it does have some sentimental value there. And for, like, trying to even envision how some, like, also Carpenter's Christine is one of my favorite adaptations of King as well. I, I love Carpenter's Christine. So it's kind of cool when you when you go through and read the book. And there are those parts that are that are really fun in the book. But you can see why they changed it, because it's like, I don't know how you would do this. Like, the car driving upstairs and uh, chasing a dude through the house. Uh, what was his name? The auto shop guy, the one that Robert Prosky played in the movie. Um, that stuff is fun. To, is fun to read in Christine. Like, uh, yeah, no, I th that that was good. Uh, but probably Carrie, I would say, is my favorite. Grant Simpson says, "Just oh, there we go. Just signed up to Patreon specifically to make sure any Charles Bronson movies get voted for." Good man. The death. W the Death Wish and Ten to Midnight episodes are my favorite snob episodes. Those are fun. To I love doing Ten to Midnight because I I just I just genuinely love Ten to Midnight. You give me an you give me an eighties Charles Bronson movie, a Cannon movie, or a Jay Lee Thompson movie, and it's all three in one thing. Sold. I love Ten to Midnight, especially like that era. There in the early eighties, where like. Slashers really were that big, so they kind of would put slasher elements in like a cop thriller or an action movie. Like Chuck Norris did a couple like that. Silent Rage is one of them, where it's a Chuck Norris action thriller, but does have slasher elements to it. Uh, Ten to Midnight is, is is certainly like that, and it's just got a great ending. It's got a batshit crazy ass ending. Ten to Midnight does, but it's amazing. <laughs> That just Bronson's is so damn cool. Uh no, I need to uh I need to do the other Death Wish movies on the show sometime. I'll put some more Bronson movies in the uh poll 
episodes uh when i bring when i bring those back no but i'm glad you i'm glad you like those those were fun to, those are some of my favorites to do too cole phelps have you seen Cade: the tortured crossing yet that's the neil breen movie right I saw it in theaters and it was magical. Neil Breen does it again. Damn right. I haven't even seen the movie yet and I could tell you Neil Breen does it again. No, if if it's playing anywhere around me, I haven't seen it listed anywhere. Um but uh uh no, there there will be whenever it comes on like VOD or whatever, like there will be a snob episode on it uh whenever it becomes like that available. Bronson Wright Wolf says, did you ever watch The Price is Right? If so, what was your favorite game on the show? Also, what are your thoughts on Drew Carey hosting the show? I wish I had a more thorough answer for you. Um, It wasn't one of the show. Like, if I had The Price is Right on, it's just because it was on, and I wouldn't really have been paying that much attention to it. Like, um... It, the Price is Right is it it it's fun. It certainly is. I definitely if you're with a group of people watching it, it's probably cool too. It just wasn't one of the game shows that I watched a lot of when I was younger. When I was younger, I wasn't really sure how a lot of the games worked. But I mean, now of course, yeah. But I don't I don't really have a lot of nostalgia for it. Uh, other than like the the iconic parts of it, like the wheel, certainly. I guess that was probably my favorite part of it, only because it was. It's the game that I think of first and foremost when I think of the show. Uh, but it's a well done show. It's it's unique. It absolutely is. Like the games are cool and have their own individual identities to them. It's just not one that I intentionally seeked out to watch as far as game shows go. Uh I was big into um uh Wheel of Fortune. Wheel of Fortune I liked a lot. I was pretty good at it too. <laughs> Um, Drew. As far as Drew Carey hosting the show goes, what I've seen of him hosting the show, he's good. I like Bob Barker. Bob Barker was great, but yeah, just I didn't watch a lot of it. Just kind of bits here and there. Uh, Mappy sixteen nineteen sixty four. When I saw the thumbnail of your cat looking into the playhouse, I first thought it was the a bald demon looking through a church window. <laughs> People often confuse our cats for demons looking through church windows, especially they they, they might have a reputation for being evil now because of for, for people who who saw the Shining episode that I put up in which Bert and Pearl are in it quite a bit. And there was something uh, I don't want to give it away, but there's something really, really special I put at the end of the episode, too. Um, I don't want to give it away for people who haven't seen it, but there is something like pretty kind of personal at the end of it. Um, so, uh, after that, like maybe that's why the episode now had to be privatized to contain Bert and Pearl's evil people now thinking they're the evil twins from, uh, from the shining. Uh, uh-uh. Will Day, uh, didn't ask me anything, but, uh, left a super chat in there. Thank you very much. Like, uh, even, even, uh, even if, uh, there's no question or anything, that still means a lot. Thanks a ton. Shane McAndrew goes, are you ever going to do a carry the musical review? If, if there is like a decent version of it, like I remember using clips of it. I think when I did the carry episode, and it was like really low quality. Like quality was that I don't think I would have been able to work with really, uh, which is saying something because I got that Miss Velma episode. <laughs> maybe I'm wrong. And maybe I'll look and see if there's like a decent quality of it. If there is, I would do an episode on it. But if it was what I was looking at when I did the Carrie episode, I don't think there's a lot I could do with that. Uh, Bronson Bronson Wright Wolf says. My dad named me after Charles Bronson. That's awesome. Charles Bronson was one of his favorite actors. That's really, really cool. One of my favorite actors is Jack Nicholson. <clears throat> my son's name is Jack. B- Bronson Wright Wolf says, what's your favorite Jackie Chan movie? I talked about this a little bit last week. Uh, in fact, in fact, I, I got this question last week. Um, look in the super chat segment from last week there'll be a more like thorough answer but um 
No, last week I talked quite a bit about Fantasy Mission Force. I'll talk about it again because I love talking about Fantasy Mission Force. I'll, uh, <laughs> but it's not really even a Jackie Chan movie. He just happens to be in it every now and then because he owed a favor to another dude in the movie. They even misspell his name on the opening credits. But it's, uh, you know, it's a... a uh, <laughs> It's an excellent uh, wartime adventure in which they have to rescue generals in World War II in which one of them is Abraham Lincoln. <laughs> one of them's a, yeah, one of them's Abraham Lincoln. So and it's got a musical number in it. They end up in a haunted house. It's great. We used to watch that a lot in high school. Bronson Wright Wolf again goes, "What's your favorite Jim Carrey movie?" Dumb and Dumber. Uh, oh, oh, gosh. Yeah, Dumb and Dumber. I could watch that any time. Just that 1994 trilogy of Jim Carrey, I could watch any time. Ace Ventura, The Mask, Dumb and Dumber. Any of those movies are my happy place, man. Like, those are comfort movies, absolutely. Dumb and Dumber, like, that's the one that... Uh, just even the soundtrack alone, just that year of Jim Carrey skyrocketing to fame... And already being a fan of his from In Living Color, because I grew up watching In Living Color as well, uh, just I, I'm just instantly taken back to being like 13 again when it's on between the movie itself, the soundtrack, which I adore. It's just so funny. It's funny and silly in the right way. Their chemistry is great. The jokes just land. It's got Charles Rocket in there as the villain. I freaking love Charles Rocket. Uh, it's got heart to it as well. It's just a classic comedy, and I I just I love I love Dumb and Dumber. Um, Corpo Agent seventy three. Will you be attending the Christine Fathom event this month? If so, will there be a midnight screening? You know, my wife hasn't seen Christine. But then again, you know, we're not that far from the due date. I don't know how much she wants to be in a movie theater. <laughs> Otherwise, I'd be like, absolutely. I didn't know they were bringing it back. That's really cool. Uh, I <laughs> I'll put it out there. I'll be like, uh, hey, honey, do you want to go see uh, Christine at the re-release? And uh, if she's like, no, I don't feel like it, I'm not going to press it. <laughs> I'll be like, okay. Okay. <laughs> Otherwise, hey, maybe she is so <laughs> she's like, she's like, I don't want him to be born early. I don't want him to be born early. Don't want him to be born early. And one of the reasons she's saying that she really, really wants to see the new saw at the end of the month. Like <laughs> she's like, oh, because she's like, I really ho I hope to God I'm OK enough to go see Saw X. She's really excited for Saw X. Mm hmm. So she's like, just stay in there for a little while so I can, mommy needs to see Jigsaw. <laughs> don't mind the, don't mind the loud noises uh, you hear outside. Everything's fine. Um, Bronson Wright Wolf again. What's your favorite Steve Martin movie? Um, the, Sh uh, the Shining. Yeah. <laughs> I've, I've had a lot of Shining on my mind. Um, the Jerk. The Jerk. Absolutely. Uh, just. Like, I mean, he's got a dog in the movie named Shithead. It's just, it's gold, and like every scene with him and the dog is great because the dog Shithead like seems to actually like understand English and what he's talking about. And when he barks, sometimes it looks like Steve Martin understands what he's saying. And that's just that's not even the plot. That's just a couple things that happen in it. <laughs> no, the jerk is oh, yeah, jerk is like I was saying with Dumb and Dumber jerk i could i could just put on any freaking time uh big jack film says saw meg 2 not kidding it was my mr popper's penguins oh the story with uh jake and jared seeing mr popper's penguins there was a, a couple uh going at it in the back oh someone you want to see a real megalodon honey i hope to god whoever that was in the theater used that line Bronson Wright Wolf goes, what's your favorite Tom Hanks movie? Uh, Castaway and Toy Story are my favorites. Uh, um, the one I want, uh, probably The Burbs, honestly. Uh, I remember seeing The Burbs in the theater with my mom, and it was great because I was just like, <laughs> I mean, I was young, like, but I was like, I wasn't expecting it to be this dark. This is like, uh, 
it wasn't my introduction to a really dark comedy. No, not at all, because I'd, I'd seen Gremlins before then. But The Burbs was just so cool because it's kind of like, you know, it's relatable if you've ever lived in a cul-de-sac like that, which I have. And also, like, great if you love horror movies as well. If, like, if you, if you know, you, you love that suburbia cul-de-sac living and horror films and hanging out with your neighbors, The Burbs is just, it's a perfect movie, man. It's so goddamn funny. So good. Bruce Dern kills it in that movie, too. Bruce Dern is so damn good in that. There go the damn brownies. My friend Kermit Wazowski says, I'm curious I'm curious how Chat GPT would write an Oogie Loves review. That movie may as well have been AI generated itself. I would key it in there right now, but I'm starting to feel it in my throat a little bit. Doing the impression of Bruce Dirt and uh, with talking about the brownies probably didn't help that at all. I also use this voice quite a bit in the Shining episode. <laughs> um I will write uh, chat GPT. Write, I'm sorry. I will ask chat GPT to write a cinema snob Oogie Loves review, and uh, I'll, I'll read that on. I'll read that on the next stream. I don't think I really have a topic set yet for for what the next stream is going to be. But tomorrow, mm, tomorrow I will uh, be streaming again as well. Big Jack Films. What would you want to see in a second Suburban Nights? Um, what would I see in a second Suburban Nights? Me in a thinner Indiana Jones outfit. I was out of shape as hell when I did that movie. That movie was me at my heaviest. And I'm playing Indiana Jones in the film. <laughs> I've lost a lot of weight since then, so I want to do Indiana Jones... Uh, more uh, more justice than that last movie did. <laughs> um, no, no, I would... Just as long as I get to play Indiana Jones, I'm cool. Uh, Bronson Wright Wolf again says, uh, I remember seeing a comment on IMDb for the 1986 heavy metal horror movie... Uh, heavy metal horror movie Trick or Treat. One user's comment said, Highway to Halloween. Do, you know, did Chat GPT write that review over on IMDb? <laughs> If 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 not, I'm stealing that. Uh, I did an episode on that on uh, on trick or treat uh, a while ago. Now it's not like an old old episode, but did I have hair? And I don't think I had hair in that episode. So it's uh, I think the halfway point of my show as as of now at least is uh, whether I have hair or not. I forgot I had hair in the uh, uh, Hercules episode. I saw that, and I was like, oh, I guess it's been nine years since I've done this episode. Trick or treat, I don't think I have hair in that one. I don't think I do. Uh, But no, no. If you want to see me talk more about uh, the 86 horror movie with Skippy from Family Ties and Gene Simmons and uh, Ozzy Osbourne, it wasn't listed in the copywritten episode, so uh, oh, someone in the chat has assured me my bald ass is in the Trick or Treat episode. I do not have hair in there. Shane McAndrew goes, type the restoration, carry, full show, official act video. Hope this helps you. That does, actually. Uh, this is, uh, he, told me, he told me what to search for in terms of finding the full show for the carry musical. I'll take a look at it. If the quality is good enough, I'm not saying it w- it's an episode that would happen anytime soon, but if the quality is good enough, I'll write it down for it to be like uh, a possible episode in the future. Big Jack Films, and then I gotta go. Uh, Big Jack Films says, a friend and I visited one of the locations and we're getting ideas. He wants to be Mutt. <laughs> he wants to be Mutt Williams. We're coming up with some ideas for a sequel to uh, Suburban Nights, and he's got a a poster on his hang on i have to pause right now because the little notification that i have there at the bottom is telling me that there are ads playing right now and the the notification <laughs> the notification is over the second part of your <laughs> sentence so once oh hang on maybe i can maybe i can try to get around it oh is it going to let me poster on your instagram okay 
I minimized the window. It at least showed me the Instagram part. You got a poster over on your Instagram. Right on. I'll check that out. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Just throw throw Mutt Williams in there. <laughs> well, it makes sense on father in real life. I hope that uh, my son has a better life story than Mutt Williams did, <laughs> as we found out in Dial of Destiny. All right. Thank you very much, everyone. Thank you for the great questions, too. Thank you. That means a hell of a lot to us. You guys always throw great material in there, fun stuff that is always just a blast to talk about. I can believe me. The fact that my voice is starting to hurt now a little bit tells you how much I love talking about this, this stuff, whether it's Dumb and Dumber, whether it's the Carrie musical, whether it's Bronson flicks, Steve Martin movies, all of that. No, I'm glad that I could, you know, it sucks that the video was uh, privatized from earlier, but it'll be back and we'll do another stream too, and I'll, I'll tell you when it's going to be back. So it's it's been fun doing an extra stream, and I'll have to remember to do a chat GPT, a chat GPT Oogie Loves video. Maybe I'll put that up. We'll do that tomorrow. All right, everyone. Thank you so much. Hope you have a great night. As of now, I'm still planning on streaming tomorrow. So until then. Stay away from elevators and stay snobby.